Okay, uh, thanks a lot. So uh, after um, you know, a career spent mostly in quantum computing, I'm now sort of moonlighting at OpenAI. Uh, they asked me to uh, think about how theoretical computer science could be used to help uh, prevent AI from destroying the world. Uh, I haven't figured it out yet. Uh, I do still have another six months. Uh, so, um, but, uh, you know, I, I find myself thinking more and more, uh, not just about uh, 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 how do we prevent this from going wrong, but also about uh, uh, what, what if it goes right? What if it goes exactly like it's supposed to and uh, can just produce any you know, intellectual product uh, as well as we can or better? And, you know, what are we for in the resulting world? Uh, so, um, well, you know, I don't, I don't have to belabor for this audience, I think, you know, what has happened in AI over the past uh, few years. Uh, you know, we now, uh, uh, to some approximation, you know, have the science fiction machine from Star Trek, right? You talk to it in English, you ask it what to do, some percentage of the time it does it. And, you know, this is uh, uh, despite, you know, how unlikely this seemed to almost all of us five years ago. You know, it's so unlikely that, that many, many people are still in denial about it. Okay, but uh, I think the even more surprising thing than what has happened is how it has happened. Uh, so, you know, what, what maybe not everyone appreciates is that the core ideas uh, that are powering the current AI revolution uh, are things that have been known for generations. Okay, so, uh, uh, I mean, neural networks, uh, backpropagation, gradient descent, uh, uh, prediction via compression. I mean, you know, I learned all this stuff when I was an undergrad in computer science in the 90s. Okay, but we also learned then that, you know, neural nets were just not that impressive. They didn't work that well. And uh, all of the wisest people uh, sa uh, uh, all said, well, you know, if you just take something that doesn't work and scale it up by a factor of a million, it's still not going to work. You know, the, 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 the true key to AI is going to be to deeply, deeply understand the nature of intelligence. And, you know, once we've done that, then we can, uh, uh, we'll, we'll be able to see why uh, uh, a human level AI could have fit on a floppy disk. Uh, and, um, you know, there were just a few nutcases like Ray Kurzweil who would go around showing these graphs that would say, well, look, uh, the amount of compute that you can do, you know, per second, per dollar is on an exponential trajectory. Trajectory, right? That's one form of Moore's law. And uh, uh, if you just extrapolate forward, then by the 2020s or so, uh, there should be about as much compute available as some crude estimate of what the human neocortex is doing. And that is when we should expect that magic will happen. Okay? And, and, and computers will suddenly understand language and be intelligent. And uh, almost all of us said, you know, that sounds like the stupidest thesis that we've ever heard. Like, you have no, you know, theoretical principle to believe that, you know, just the, the sheer amount of compute is, 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 is alone sufficient. Uh, now, I'm a firm believer that, uh, um, you know, that like one of the, the, the key uh, dicta of science is that you let the world tell you when you're wrong. Okay? And you don't make up uh, some elaborate justification for why you actually weren't wrong. So I think that's the situation here. Uh, so, you know, but, but, you know, this is, Moore's law hasn't ended, right? So, uh, uh, you know, we're still getting more, uh, uh, more and more compute. So you might wonder, where is this going? Uh, uh, what will GPT-8 be able to do? You know, will I just be able to ask it to solve any of the greatest unsolved problems in math or science, like prove the Riemann hypothesis? And it'll say, sure, I can help you with that and just spit out a proof. Um, you know, by the way, I, I asked uh, uh, GPT to cooperate with me in illustrating that, uh, which it uh, happily did, but then hastened to add that it's only kidding and that the Riemann hypothesis remains an open problem. Uh, so, you know, this is one possibility, but then, you know, what about beyond that? I mean, wh uh, what if, you know, as some people predict, uh, uh, AI would uh, become to us as we are to chimpanzees, right? Well, you know, how well do we treat chimpanzees, right? And so 
to then, you know, you're led to the, the, uh, the, the Terminator scenario, of course, which, you know, it's been amazing to watch. You know, I've known the little subculture of nerds on the internet who have uh, worried about AI doom for, for 20 years. Uh, uh, and uh, just within the last year, because of chat GPT, this went to something that is discussed in the White House press briefing and in congressional hearings. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, you know, an AI wouldn't necessarily have to hate us or, or want to kill us. We might just, you know, be in the way or irrelevant to whatever alien goal it has. Okay, but I think, you know, that's not the only possibility that is on the table here. So um, my colleague, uh, Belaz Barak, who's uh, now also uh, on sabbatical at OpenAI, uh, and I uh, uh, tried uh, a while ago to make a decision tree of the sort of major possibilities being discussed now. So, uh, you know, the progress in AI that we've seen over the last few years could fizzle out, right? There might be uh, diminishing returns to, you know, more and more scale, or we might, you know, uh, uh, find it too expensive to get the necessary compute, uh, or we might run out of training data. You know, we're already sort of running out. I mean, there is all of YouTube and TikTok and so forth that you could still feed into the mall, but that might just make the AI dumber rather than smarter. Right? So, uh, okay, but then if it doesn't fizzle out and if it just continues, you know, the way it has over the last few years, then you have to imagine that it's just a matter of, uh, uh, you know, what, 10 years, 20 years, how many, you know, until it can do just about everything as well as we can. And, uh, and, and what then, you know, does civilization recognizably continue with sort of humans in charge? Uh, and and w whether it does or it doesn't, uh, is that good or is it bad uh, from our point of view? Or, you know, uh, maybe it depends who you ask. Uh, so, um, you know, now, like a lot of people don't want to have this discussion. They sort of, they still sort of, I think, don't want to speculate about these things, including, you know, many distinguished colleagues of mine. A lot of them are immersed in uh, what I like to call the, the religion of justice right? So they will say, look, chat GPT, you know, despite however impressive it might look, uh, uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's actually not because we, really, we know that it is just a stochastic parrot. It is just a next token predictor. It is just a giant function approximator. It is just a, uh, a huge autocomplete. Right? And, and I, I always want to say to these people, okay, and what are you? Like, aren't you just a bundle of neurons and synapses obeying the laws of physics, right? And what about your mom, right? You know, I mean... Uh, um, you know, I mean, if you're going to, you know, use these reductionist or deflationary ways of talking, then, you know, at least you, you have to be symmetrical about it, I think. So uh, a closely related tendency, is, uh, well known in AI, is these sort of endlessly moving goalposts. You know, I still remember when uh, Deep Blue beat Kasparov at chess, and, you know, very smart people said, okay, but this is not impressive because chess is really just a search problem. Wake me up when computers can beat, you know, the human uh, uh, grandmasters at Go, okay, uh, because that's just an infinitely deeper and richer game, okay, and then we had AlphaGo, and then people said, okay, but fine, it's just a game, everyone expected that this would happen, you know, wake me up when uh, uh, large language models can win a gold medal in the International Math Olympiad, okay, so I actually have a bet with a colleague that that will happen by 2026, uh, you know, there was some progress on it just this past month, uh, now I might be wrong, it might happen by, by 2036 instead, but it seems clear that this is just a a question of years at this point. And, you know, after uh, uh, AI can, you know, get gold medals and, you know, math competitions, okay, wh which goalpost uh, should we have next? Uh, so, you know, we might even be tempted to formulate a general thesis here, which I'll call, you know, the game over thesis, which would say that given any task with a reasonably objective metric of success or failure, games, competitions, uh, and on which an AI can be given suitably many examples of success and failure, it's only a matter of years before not only AI, but AI on our current paradigm will match or beat the best human performance. Now, that might not exhaust everything that we care about, 
uh, 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 you know, the, the, there might be things that are not quantifiable in this way. Okay, but, but if even this is true, I think that already forces us to some uncomfortable places in, you know, thinking about kind of, well, you know, uh, 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 what do we tell our kids about, you know, uh, 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 what kind of jobs are going to be available for them and, and sort of w uh, what is our role in the world. Uh, so, um, and, and, you know, it's clear that sort of already what, what you know, ChatGPT and, and Dolly and so forth can already do has sort of uh, uh, created uh, for real for us the sort of uh, uh, Blade Runner scenario where, you know, we are confronted with the problem of distinguishing uh, human outputs from AI ones. So, you know, one of the main safety projects that I've worked on uh, during my time at OpenAI uh, has been a scheme for watermarking the outputs of GPT and other language, uh, other large language models. Uh, what this means is uh, sort of uh, replacing the randomness in the models by pseudo-randomness in a way that inserts a, uh, a secret statistical signal into, you know, the choice of words or tokens uh, by which you can later uh, detect that, yes, this was generated by ChatGPT. This did not come from a human. Okay, now I should caution you that uh, this has not been deployed yet. Uh, so OpenAI, along with Google and Anthropic, uh, has been moving kind of slowly and deliberately toward uh, uh, deployment of, of text watermarking. Um, even uh, uh, if and when uh, it is deployed, you know, someone who is sufficiently determined will be able to evade it, uh, you know, just like with schemes for uh, uh, preventing uh, piracy of, you know, music or software or whatever. Uh, so, you know, it's not a perfect solution, but I hope that this and other measures uh, will eventually be able to, you know, make it less convenient for students to use ChatGPT to cheat on their homework. Uh, uh, one, of maybe one of the most common misuses in the world right now, or uh, for people to use it for spam, propaganda, impersonation, uh, all sorts of other bad things like that. Okay? But when I talked to my colleagues about watermarking, uh, I was surprised that uh, often you know, they had an objection to it that was not technical at all. It wasn't about how well can it work. It was about, uh, well, should we still even be giving homework at all? <laughs> right? I mean, you know, if, if uh, uh, ChatGPT can write the term papers just as well as the students can, right? and that's still going to be true after the students graduate, like, you know, what's the point? Why are we still teaching these skills? Uh, you know, and, and I think about this even in terms of of my 11-year-old daughter, for example. I mean, she loves writing short stories. Now, ChatGPT can also write short stories on the same themes, you know, like a, a, an 11-year-old girl who gets recruited to a magical boarding school, but which is totally not Hogwarts and has nothing to do with Hogwarts, right? or, 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 you know, w w whatever other theme like that. Okay, uh, now you could ask the question, uh, you know, if you look at, like, today's cohort of 11-year-olds, are they ever going to be better writers than GPT? Or, you know, there, it's, a, it's, a, it's a race, right? Which one is going to improve faster? Um, so, uh, um, uh, so, so, you know, you, you, know you, you could imagine that, you know, even what we think of as like the greatest products of artistic genius, you know, the music of the Beatles, right? In principle, you know, you could have uh, some AI model uh, uh, do the same things. Okay, but when you think about that enough, you start wondering, what do we mean, what, what would we even mean by an AI that created music that was as good as the Beatles? Right, like, uh, you know, and then that forces you to ask, well, well, what made the Beatles so good in the first place? And, you know, I'm not a music expert, but roughly we could decompose it into sort of two components, uh, one being sort of new ideas about what direction, you know, music ought to go in, and secondly, technical execution on those ideas. Okay, now, suppose you had an AI where, you know, you just fed it the Beatles' whole back catalog, and then it generated more songs that the Beatles plausibly could have generated, but didn't, you know, that sounded kind of like Hey Jude or Yesterday or whatever. Okay, I think that, you know, most people would, if they saw that, would just move the goalpost. Okay, they would say, no, that doesn't really impress us, right? This is just uh, uh, extrapolation. And, you know, uh, like uh, uh, Schopenhauer said, you know, talent hits a target that no one else can hit, but genius, you know, that hits a target that no one else can see, right? And, 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 and you know, the, uh, 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 what, what we want to see is the AI deciding for itself to take music in this new direction. 
Uh, so, okay, now, but now, you know, imagine that we had that as well. You know, imagine that you had an AI where every time you hit the refresh button in your browser window, you got a brand new, like radically new Beatles-like direction that music could have been taken in in the 1960s, right? And each time you run it, you just get another sample from this probability distribution. Okay, you know, even then, there's something kind of weird about that. I mean, you know, you could say the Beatles were there at the right place and time to pick a particular direction, and not only that, but sort of drag all of the rest of us along with them, so that our whole objective function changed, right? We can't judge music anymore except by a Beatles-influenced standard, just like we can't judge plays except by a Shakespeare-influenced standard, right? And, and so now if, you know, there's sort of a, what I like to call an AI abundance paradox, right? Which is as soon as you have an AI that can produce a new artwork, uh, uh, well, you know, however good it is, it can produce a thousand similar artworks by just, Uh, uh, running it more and more often. You can always rewind and try again. And uh, so, so it sort of radically devalues you know, the worth of that kind of production, just like the price of gold would crash if someone uh, towed a 10-mile-long golden asteroid to the Earth. Right? Uh, it wouldn't actually be, 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 be worth you know, uh, what, what, you th what you thought it was. Okay, and, and so You know, you could say, well, well, at least humans will always have this sort of advantage, okay? That uh, at least we have the advantage of being frail. And there's only, you know, there's only one of us. You can't back us up and run us over and over on the same input. You know, when we make a decision, we really mean that decision, right? We're sticking with it. And that's the only one that you're going to get out of us, uh, which is sort of a weird place to, you know, stake our claim of human specialness on. But that might be the place that we're forced to. Okay, but, you know, as soon as I've said that, I have to confront a sort of exotic objection, uh, which is, well, is it really true that humans uh, uh, cannot be rewound, cannot be copied, cannot be you know, saved as backups and so forth. I mean, it is possible, you know, some people think so, that, that our own cognition you know, is happening in some sort of digital computation layer you know, in the neurons and synapses, and once, technology, once brain scanning technology gets good enough, you know, maybe uh, uh, the next iteration of Neuralink or whatever, right, we can all just back ourselves up to the cloud We can, you know, rewind ourselves, uh, uh, restore from backup, you know, and then that leads to all these strange uh, questions like, uh, would you agree to have yourself faxed to Mars? You know, just sent as information, reconstituted there. Uh, the original meat version of you will just be painlessly euthanized. Don't worry about it, right? Uh, or, um, you know, would you uh, uh, back up your brain before you go on a dangerous trip? Um, so, you know, I don't know whether these things will ultimately be possible, right? It's a question about uh, uh, the, ultimately the biology and the physics of the human brain, right? Is just the sort of digital layer the relevant one, or is our identity sort of bound up with the sort of unclonable, uh, 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 you know, not fully knowable, you know, chaotic details of the uh, 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 molecules, you know, inside of the, you know, individual sodium ion channels in the neurons, right? If you had to go all the way down to the molecular level, then the famous no cloning theorem in quantum mechanics would say, well, you can't make a perfect copy. Right? If you try to, you're going to have to make measurements that will you know, fail to tell you what you want and even destroy the original copy that you had. Okay, so uh, uh, you know, I don't know whether our identity is sort of bound up in these unclonable uh, uh, physical degrees of freedom. But you know, even, even not knowing whether uh, that's true or not, um, You know, I mean, it does seem like a difference between us and any existing AI, that we're sort of buffeted around by chaos such that no external agent can have, at least uh, as, as far as we know, can have all the information relevant to predicting our behavior. So then to circle all the way back to AI safety, this leads to a very exotic AI safety proposal, which is why don't we just teach our AIs, indoctrinate them in a religion that venerates the universe's unclonable, ephemeral, analog loci of 
creativity and intelligence uh, wherever they might be found. It says protect them from destruction, defer to their preferences. Those are the ones that matter because you know they're, they're the ones that sort of only get the one chance. Uh, now, I don't know if this is a good idea uh, you know, in a different universe. Maybe I fell in love with a different idea, but here I kind of fell in love with this one. And unfortunately, you don't get to back me up and see a different one. So, all right, so, so, thanks.